In this example, let's first start by factorizing the denominator. So we'll factorize the denominator and we find it goes into two brackets x x that one is a positive tells me both of them will be the same that one is a positive tells me both of them will be positive what times what gives me one and if i add it i get two okay one and one one times one if i add it i get two now this one can just be written a little bit different 2x minus 1 over x plus 1 squared now you need to remember that this time it doesn't mean that I have I'm going to have a, a over x plus 1 plus an a over x plus 1 because there's no reason why I couldn't have just added these two without using the square which means that one of them had to have had a square this common denominator tells me that there were two of those brackets in one of the denominators one of the, the lowest common denominator somewhere had two sorry this shouldn't be a it should be b okay and that's all we'll say we'll say that the one denominator because of the square one of the denominators in the numerator had to have had a square and now we go ahead and we add up the two terms but I can't add because they don't have common denominators this one needs to be multiplied with x plus 1 one more time and in the numerator one more time so now I can add them up x plus 1 squared is the common denominator now this first numerator I do not, do not need to multiply with anything but the second one needs to be multiplied so I have plus bx plus b. Now we group. First step was factorize. Second step was split over the factors. The fourth, uh, third step is to group. And I see I have a bx, only one term with an x, and I have two terms that doesn't have any x's. Sorry, a and b. A plus b. And that's over x plus 1 squared. Now with that in mind, let's see what do we have. We see we must get a 2x and a negative 1. So in front of the x must be a 2. What's in front of our x? b. Which means our b is a 2. So b is equal to 2. Then we see that a plus b, the term without an x, must equal negative 1. Negative 1. But we already know what b is. So let's just substitute what we know about b. b is equal to 2, must equal negative 1. So what is a? What must I add a 2 to? to still owe 1 means I owed 3 negative 3 a must be equal to negative 3 because negative 3 plus 2 gives me negative 1 in other words my partial fractions would be a is negative 3 and a was over the x plus 1 the squared bracket plus b was over the x plus 1 bracket and b is equal to 2. So there we go. That was a quick example and I'll do you another one.